as noted, I, I actually have to, the, the segue of the speakers before me was really great um, because I'm proud to say when hearing about Croatia um, that I'm actually citizen number 2,482 of Cyber Yugoslavia. Uh, which was established in August of 1999. So when the real Yugoslavia was going away, uh, a group of people decided they were going to get together online and form Cyber Yugoslavia and seek admission to the United Nations. I am the Secretary of Progressive Rock for Cyber Yugoslavia to this day. I'm also a former naval officer, so hearing the story of, uh, of Admiral Leahy is meaningful to me. Um, I'm new relatively. I've been in Iowa for about uh, six months at this point, and about three weeks ago I was named the new Executive Director of Salisbury House. Um, it's a wonderful historic property. It's a great tourist destination. I would love to see you all out there. I could stand here for 10 minutes and talk about how we use Twitter and Facebook and all the things that we do, but it seems self-serving to me to, uh, to do that. So it's a great place. I'd love to have you come out, but I want to take a slightly different approach to talking about tourism. Um, when I'd originally uh, submitted a proposal to speak today, it was before I knew I was going to be in that position. And my original proposal was on the perils of virality and explaining why to this day my family and I still receive occasional death threats from fans of Motley Crue. So are there any Motley Crue fans here that I need to be? I can't see with the lights, so if you're, if you're okay, oh, wait a minute, I just saw the, um, so, so uh, that didn't seem to fit uh, with, with the dignity of my new position and, um, and the dignity of Salisbury House. So I, I being kind of a reductive person, I went to the dictionary and said, tourism, what is tourism? And tourism is defined as the practice of travel for pleasure. And I think that's kind of a sublime sentence when you think about it, because any time you move from point A to point B and you're happy about it, you're a tourist. You're traveling for pleasure. And this is something that, that has a lot of resonance for me, because my wife and I uh, live in Beaverdale now, purchased a house there last November. This is the 26th house that I've lived in in my life um, in 13 different states. I'm the son of a Marine Corps officer. I'm a former neighbor officer myself. I was born in the low country of South Carolina when my daughter, uh, her first two years of life were spent about a mile above sea level up in uh, Idaho Falls, Idaho. Um, I spent the last 18 years in upstate New York where my daughter remains as a college junior. So I've spent a lot of time traveling from point A to point B with pleasure and enjoying the experience. Since coming to Iowa, um, I was here at the beginning, or kind of the, the peak frenzy of caucus season, and heard people talking about this 99 county thing. I saw the Bachman tour bus go by one time and said, it really doesn't seem like that's that hard if you're in the back of a tour bus and somebody's driving it for you, and you can be doing other things. So to test that premise, I actually did do the 99 counties. So I've done all 99 counties, and when you drive yourself and you do it yourself, it's hard. So I will say that anybody that commits to doing that, it's hard, but it gave me such a great um, street level sense of the state and I was delighted to have a mild winter when I could actually achieve that on my own. What does this have to do with the state of now and technology? Let's revisit that definition of tourism, of uh, traveling for pleasure, the practice of traveling for pleasure, and let's apply it to the digital world. I think we're at a point now where we can define uh, state of place online. I think all of us have a state of place online. And if I retell that kind of short story about my background in a digital sense, um, I've been a digital tourist for most of my life as well. Um, I go back probably further than most people. My first, uh, my first experience um, of actually existing and communicating in a digital world was in 1982 at the United States Naval Academy via ARPANET and MILNET. Um, in the late 80s, uh, I was involved in doing a lot of work that was taking place on listservs and bulletin boards where you had to take a phone that had a mouthpiece and an earpiece, which many people have probably never seen, plug it into a thing that had two rubber gaskets and communicate that way. That was the technology of now. In the early 90s, um, the, the first sort of public uh, internet services came along. Um, I was, in the early 90s, I was a sysop uh, for the RockNet forum on CompuServe which was managed in ASCII. This was actually getting online with your phone jack and communicating an ASCII code, which again, probably many people here have never seen. Uh, I am proud to say I've never been an AOL customer, so I was a, I was a loyal uh, CompU server at the beginning. Around that time, the web was launched in 1993. Within a year of that, I had my own website. Um, uh, moving through as things evolved through the 90s, you went through the era of tripods and um, uh, live journal, you know, just all of the early things there, and I actually even have to pull my list out because I tried to think over the years 
um, about some of the ones that have come and gone in terms of the technology of now. Uh, six Degrees, Friendster, Orkut, Zanga, MySpace, LinkedIn, Facebook, Twitter, Google+, Flickr, Classmates, and, I, and you know, God knows how many that I'm forgetting at this point, but I felt that uh, it, was, it was useful for me to be involved in those. As noted, I became a citizen of Cyber Yugoslavia in 1999, and I began blogging in September of 2000 after encountering both the term and the concept on uh, Rebecca Blood's Pocket, which people who are old bloggers may know that. If you're not, look at her blog for September of 2000. It's the greatest encapsulation, and it's still online, I checked, of uh, the early days of blogging, Eaton Web, and where the word came from and the terminology. People think it sort of developed organically. There is, that word blog was, can be traced back to one particular place. So uh, I've spent this time being a, 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 an online tourist, if you will. I travel from place to place. Um, I enjoy the experience. I explore new things. I like to find new places. I like to return to favorite places. I like to integrate my real world traveling for pleasure with my online traveling for pleasure. And having done this on both sides of this for so long and for so many years, I found two um, key takeouts that I would like to just share in conclusion. The first one of those is that a well-deployed um, digital presence, whatever suite you're using to communicate, is really your best bridge between points in the, in the physical world. I can state categorically, I'll tell a brief um, blog story. I blogged for um, the Times Union, which was a daily newspaper in Albany, New York, for four years. I was the executive director of a nonprofit at that point. I logged on one morning to my blog, and there were uh, very partisan paid political ads all over my blog. And if you know that much about nonprofit law, executive directors should not be promoting a particular candidate in a public forum. So this was a problem for me. So I said to the newspaper guys, you can't put that up on my, my blog that way. And they said, uh, in, in harsher words than I'll use right now, we can basically do whatever we want and, uh, and tough, you know, take it or leave it. So I left and I learned from that experience. I created a website in Albany called Indie Albany. And the concept here was kind of the antithesis or the, the opposite of the Huffington Post model where a unit takes people's words and thoughts and concepts, um, uses them for other ends that may or may not be supportive of what the writers did, does not compensate the writers, um, and, and, and potentially puts the, the information in those words in places that the writers wouldn't desire them. We created a safe platform for writers to be able to come in, uh, communicate, write what they wanted, own copyright to their words in perpetuity. Uh, when they choose to not write with us anymore, the words left, the stuff came down off the website, it was theirs. Never any advertising, never any commercial interest. When I moved here, I said, okay, and I did Indie Albany, maybe I can do something like that out here. So I said Indie Des Moines, and I kept feeling like I was stammering. So I actually shortened it down to Indie Moines. And for the first six months that I was here, um, I spent a lot of time using Indie Moines to network through the various work, you know, WordPress and all the other outlets. I used all of the tools that we're talking about here from a tourism standpoint, and I can state 100% categorically that me landing the job that I landed three weeks ago is as an absolute direct, direct follow-on of having that digital tourism network out there. I turned my digital tourism network into a, a real-world network. The second takeout that I have, as I kind of rattled off that list of, of old uh, social media things, is that um, the mere fact that we're pausing here today uh, to, to reflect together collectively on the concept of the state of now and the technology of now means that we're yesterday. Um, whatever is happening in the now right now is not happening in this room. Um, you know, Cyber Yugoslavia at the time that came out seemed like such a brilliant idea. That was such a a radical concept, um, and six months later it was, it was laughable. And I suspect that five or ten years from now people will look at this point in our time today and say, what were you thinking in limiting yourself arbitrarily and for no reason to 140 characters? What was that all about? Why did people do that? Um, and so I really believe that being a digital tourist is just like being a physical tourist. You've got to constantly be looking on the out, you know, being looking out for where is that beach that nobody is on? Where can you put your tent stakes down before everybody else gets there and really love it? And while we reflect on how this is changing our lives today, I can tell you that, that somewhere, you know, maybe within Wi-Fi reach of where we're sitting right now, somebody is out there finding that new digital beach. Uh, and pitching their tent on it, and I want to know where that is. That's what excites me about tourism. It excites me about tourism in the real world and in the virtual world. And, uh, and if you know where that beach is, if you've got a tip, come see me at Salisbury House and share it, and I'd be happy to go explore it with you. So thank you very much.